rico. Suave. Oh, come on, stop it. I'm tired of this bullshit. I'm, I've got my stuff. Go! And I'm tired of filming this, all right? Come on! I'm tired of you bossing me around. Go! Carlos, we already know that Lupita is your niece, and she is not Richard Gay's daughter. And we also know that you are not Richard's brother. So... Welcome to the round table here in Leisure First. Welcome everybody. Hello. I can hear you. Let me see. Hello. Okay, let's welcome our hostess, Robin London. Bob. Hi, hi guys. Barbara Ginovisi. And Ivan Gilbert. Yay! And here we go. Oh, thank you, reporter. All right, first I would like to say thank you everybody for coming back to the round table and our first, first live performance here in our own backyard, Leisure Village West at Leisure Fair. Yoo-hoo! Finally, we made it. We made it. All right, we got a lot of new topics today. Actually, we're not doing topics. We are doing current affairs. So I hope everybody current likes affairs. it. Current affairs. Wow. We are doing current affairs. Sounds All right? Sounds exciting, right? All right, we are live streaming. We got YouTube. We got Twitter. We still have the... It's one that everyone's been talking about. Robert De Niro, 79 years old, and girlfriend, 82. And girlfriend Tiffany Chang, 45, too tired to smile, to smile because they're welcoming their new baby. Ooh, they just had it five days ago. What do you think about that panel? Okay, um, it's Al Pacino. Al Pacino. No, oh, Robert Al De Niro Pacino. also. Robert De Niro. Both Robert right. De Niro. Yeah. Right. Yeah, they both. Well, Al Pacino is the one that I happen to look up. And he is 83 years old. And evidently he's not really happy. Number one, he said he didn't think he could have a baby at 83 years old. He didn't think that his sperm was good enough, which everybody, I think, is saying the same thing. So, last I heard, he was looking for a DNA test. 
because he said, if I can do this at 83, I want it known out there. He said, but he wants to make sure that his sperm was good enough to produce a baby. So anyway, he's got, um, he said he only had the affair what, a couple of times with this girl, but now he's petrified at 83, how do you raise a child? So anyway, as far as I'm concerned, I think it's Al Pacino. So, I mean, if it was anybody else, sorry, in Leisure Village West, that would not be happening. But um, Al Pacino, well, you don't know yet. Al Pacino <laughs> and Robert De Niro, yes, I guess that is a possibility. What do you think, guys? Well, he's not the first famous person to have a child at that age. Picasso had children when he was 82. Picasso, yes. the famous painter, okay. he had children at a late age, and he had several children. So it's not so unusual. So guys here that are in their 80s, keep trying. Only find yourself <laughs> some younger women. Sorry, ladies. I had to add that in. Yes. So keep plugging. You'll be all right. So what do you think, personally? I, yeah, personally, I'd be terrified. You know, if I suddenly found out at that age that uh, you know the, mo the mother could be changing two sets of diapers. So oh I mean, my God! So, uh, I'm sorry. I had to go there. But uh, Tony Randall had was yes, yes. at a pretty late age stage in his life. So um, it, it's interesting the differences in, in reaction. To the two actors, that one one is very happy and one is terrified. Yes. You know, like Maury Povich, who, who's your daddy? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I think I would rather find it out. Let me see what Rico yes, think about this. As long as he's happy and uh, hey, more power to him. God bless him. There's other things to be concerned about. And, uh, that's it. Uh, hey. I get invited to the press. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. So what do you think? He said, don't ask me anything. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? So tell me, what do you think? saying that uh you know he's never going to see his children grow up and well that's that's sad it is you know but so many children will grow up with this one so, so many children <laughs> oh my god that's Connor and we can't hear him <laughs> he shut mine off on purpose <laughs> I said so many children grow up with one parent and they turn out okay. Maybe it's not the best best thing for them, but it's sometimes. But as long as yeah, as long as they're loved, like Cookie said, they're taken care of. And you know. Amen. So what do you do? I wouldn't have the patience to have a child at that age. No, but I know that I would need a nanny, a housekeeper, everything. Al Pacino has that trust. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I want to know what do you think? It's not the editor. No, what? He's an old man. What's he going to do with a baby? With Just enjoy it or her. And then it's going to come like the child is going to be without a father. Lots of kids are without fathers, yeah, and unfortunately, yeah. there are men that die young. Yes. So yes. you had that. My husband died. So, so I don't think it's so terrible. I don't think it's unfair for the child. I think the child will be fine financially. He'll make sure they're set up, and I think that'll work out well. And she'll find another man, and there'll be another man in her life. Yeah. 
Oh, oh wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. Ivan. Ivan, what do you think, Ivan? I totally disagree. My dad died when I was 20. He actually died right in front of me. And my, I was the fourth child. So the parents I had were very different than the parents my brothers had. They were at different stages. Was I loved? Absolutely. Did I love them? Absolutely. But a man having a child at that age knows that his time is finite at best. And to choose to do that to a child, I think it's absolutely wrong. Because every day of my life, since my dad is dying, I would give him to have him back. And that's my thing. I think, first of all, uh, he didn't want a child, is what I read in the article. He did not want a child. He really thought he could not conceive a child at 83 years old. So he is shocked. He was. That's why he said he really just wants that DNA test to see is not that it's his and he wants to deny it just to say wow i did it you know i i, I was able to do this what do you think mr Tyler? you know the saying is love is love and love can happen at any age and love can happen between any people and you know it's of course very important for parents to love their children and children to love their parents and that's one side of it and, and i hope that these parties whether it's de niro or al pacino or, or anyone or anyone else uh, they, they actually do love each other uh, there's a flip side of this uh, some of you have intimated already and actually from a legal perspective uh, and that's the child and, uh, not all states all jurisdictions uh, see this but there are some jurisdictions that do permit an action by the child after birth to sue parents for unwanted birth Oh, no. in, other words, in other words, that they should they feel that they should not have been born based on the parents' actions. As I said, there are, I'm not saying I agree with this. I'm simply saying that there are other there are jurisdictions that have that on the books. So whether or not these jurisdictions will apply, I don't know. Uh, but it, it's something that's out there. We have seen these types of cases occur. And, you know, it, it remains to be seen. I, I, I hope everyone uh, from the beginning is loved, and the parents love the children, and the children love the parents. And in the end, uh, you know, should the unfortunate incident where the parents die early, uh, I hope that there's adequate provision for the children, and the children have uh, enough experience to remember the parents and keep that and uh, prolong that and hopefully uh, Thanks, Ivan. All I can say is I wish he adopted me. <laughs> Not me, but uh, Cookie wanted to say something. And uh, he said that God brings every child into his world for a reason. Well, all this other stuff. You don't know where the child's life is going to go. You may have a, a fantastic life. You may be a famous person one day. A scientist. You never know. Thank you. So we can go next one. That was a good topic. Thank you, everyone. Here's another one that's going to make you tickle or angry. Okay, no Ladies, fight. No fighting. Like Shakira, no fighting. Sorry, no okay. fighting, no fighting. Hips don't mind. Do men or women mature quicker? Paddle? Wait, 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 Physically, they, it's just a known fact that women mature quicker than boys when Come they on, go man. through puberty. It's a known fact, sorry men, but you know, you just catch up eventually, <laughs> right? They do catch up, you know. Okay. Wait, I'm not sure. Al, uh, yeah, Ivan, what do you think? Yeah. I'm not sure that's, that's the only fact. Uh, certainly, physically, I would agree with you. Physically, I think women do mature faster than men. Uh, we've all seen that growing up. 
but it's not limited to just physical attributes. There's mental attributes, there's emotional attributes, there's social attributes um, in a lot of different areas. So uh, in some ways, yes, but perhaps in some ways, no. Oh, well, I don't know about that. Sorry, well Ivan. said. And the only reason I'm saying is when you go through puberty, you're going through a whole mess of biological changes and uh, chemical changes, um, the brain, uh, everything. So to me, right then and there, I feel a woman mentally and emotionally are developing quicker. And sorry, I didn't just my <laughs> Okay. I would, I would say the two of you both put together a very sound, intelligent argument on your position. And here I'm going to say, at age 60, I'm planning to go into a toy show on Sunday. <laughs> so where does that put me? And for collective, you know, that, that my wife is going to say, where did you put this stuff? Where did you put this So, um, and I even have a t-shirt that says, uh, you can grow up, but, uh, or, I can get older, but I'll never grow up. So uh, I, I would have to agree that by and large, women uh, generally mature faster. Um, See? Rico. Rico Suave. I, I tell you, I have to agree that women do mature a lot quicker and a lot faster. The reason I say this is because I, I'm still a kid. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I'm with you. Me too. I think women mature quicker because if it wasn't meant for the woman to have a child and for her to be responsible in the house, there wouldn't be a family because the men can't do it without us. And that's the truth. They well, don't do the food shopping, well, they don't do the cooking here, and they have a guy that'll do some of that stuff, but they can't run a household, a child, work, and do the same thing together. I respectfully agree to this. Okay, when so I first go for came it. to America, I was nine and a half. I was came to America as a immigrant. My mother died six months later. It was not even ten. It was my dad. But he took on that responsibility. So each family has an individual was, story. I cooked. My mother could cook. He never hit us. My mother hit us all the time. It was five of us, you know. But no, my dad is is <coughs> exception in my heart. I'm not, I've never met anyone like my dad. And he's in heaven now. He died at 67. So my father, this is why we all turn out the way we did. Came an American citizen at 19. My dad always said, speak English when you're out there, assimilate to the culture. I spoke Spanish and Chinese. That was my dad who's Chinese, um, Costa Rica. So my dad was my hero. So I can, I don't know anyone like my father. I'm still looking for him. So, you know, we have comments on Facebook that some men and some women never mature mentally. Oh, yeah. Yeah. True? True. True. So what do you think? I totally, I totally agree. Women mature faster because they go through puberty at 14, Now it's younger. Now it's younger, so I love them. I thought the guys in the back here. How about the guys in the back here? Let me see. This is the, right, this I'm is my friend. <laughs> so if women mature much faster, does that mean when people get older, women act older much faster? Well, that's what I was just going to say, George. Because we can give them a run for their money. I was just going to say that because I actually uh, went, I'm not, I was nine years old. I was very young. So I decided now that I'm older, I'm going back to being a child. So that's why I'm doing this. I'm going out. I'm having a grand old time, and I don't care anymore. So I went through this. I think that I, I don't want to do the man versus woman issue because I, I think that's an individual thing. Some people just mature and some people will just never mature, right? And I don't think it's 
have to do with being a man or a woman. But I also want to say that I think we mature, we're alive and we have all these really hard responsibilities and you know, it's like you don't have room to play because we've got so much other stuff to do at our age now. That's what we can play and be kids again. But you can be immature, but you can be responsible. I mean, I'm very immature. I'm very responsible. And I recognize it. Because I don't want to grow up. I want to be a baby. That's what Peter Pan is about. Yeah. But this is the life. Yes. I'm 85. No. But, but wait a minute, Carter. Up here. Still 18, 19 years old. And I always liked younger men. <laughs> but both husbands were older. One was six years older, and the other one was 11 years older. And the third gentleman that I was very friendly with was 20 years older. Yeah, that's how I got to really pub. He's a village. Now I understand why she called me Botox. <laughs> so, next one, Yolanda. Tell me. The next one, Ricardo. It's. Somebody say, Love you, Rico, on Facebook. Love you, Rico. Someone loves you on Facebook. And why not? <laughs> the next one is artificial intelligence. How do you think that's affecting or making our our world's change. What's artificial intelligence? Artificial robotics. It could be your Alexa you have in the house. Your Alexa. Um, your, yeah, your ring doorbell. Um, robotics in the hospitals. Big thing in the hospitals. Everything right is now. changing. Everything now is going. And our kids, that's what I always say with the grandkids, that's all they know is artificial intelligence. They can't even write a checkbook. And I keep saying, it's wonderful. It's wonderful what they learn and what they do. But God forbid there is ever a, a solar flare and everything shuts down. These kids are clueless. As to, they're going to need us. That's when they're going to come back and say, I need you to help us out. Because that is true. But I will tell you, I love my Alexa. It scares me sometimes when she starts talking to me from another room. And I'm like, Carmen, did you say something? Because was it me? And it was Alexa. And all of a sudden, she'll come into a conversation. I also have a little robot thing for the dog. I don't know if anybody has a fur bow or whatever, if you have a dog. And when I go out, I can check on my dog and see if he's partying or not. But anyway, when I'm walking around sometimes, all of a sudden, I'll be like, and I'll go look, and he's looking at me. That freaks me out. So I understand it, but I really don't. But I think it's it's good, but I'm not really quite sure. I, I'm glad I grew up when I grew up. Let's just put it that way. Okay, let's let's see what Bob and I would think about this. Well, I know technology usually develops a lot faster than our sociology develops. So usually we run into you know we we create something that's really really cool, and then we find out how many different pitfalls we fall into. Because um, like anything, it can be abused, or it's something that's so brand new, we don't realize just what's going to happen. And I'm not afraid of technology, but at the same time, though, I think we need to watch how it's being used, how it's being applied. Um, I don't want to use the word regulated, but I, I am a little concerned about things like how artificial intelligence, I'm sure you've heard some of the reports, can do a term paper for a yeah. student, oh, yeah. or uh, or write an article, which um, would endanger my job. So I really don't want to see that happen. Um, but that's so, happening right now. But it is happening, yes. It is happening. And so I, I, I would not like to see it abused mm. and applied in, in a way that takes away our own humanity. Yeah. Um, you know, um, yeah. I mean, we've seen even in the sense of artificial intelligence robotics, how we're seeing how close we're, we're less science fiction now than we are to reality science reality in, in these constructs that look like humans can talk like humans uh, we go to stores right now and, and instead of having cashiers we have the, the kiosks we have less cashiers and more 
centers just to put in our cards and, and, and do all that, which I I understand that it's an economic thing, but I also think it's if you lose something in the translation, when we don't get to even go up to a cashier and say hi or how's your day yeah. or that brief interaction that we have, That's right. um, and, and at least it's something. And, and now we have less of that, even for a even for a, a McDonald's for God's sakes, you know, like. Bob, or anybody, has anybody been to sh uh, Stop and Shop lately? No. Yeah. And that I did Robux, yeah. That thing going around, around scared the crap out of me, the one yeah. day. Yeah. It's a nobody yeah. walks yeah. around. How are you doing? And I wasn't paying attention. I yeah. turned around, he's right here. And I'm like, holy crap, get away from me. I was like, who are you? That is scary. That was a little freaky. Yeah. Where are you thinking, Yeah, I want to touch a little uh, on something that Bob had mentioned, and that's robotics. I want to sit around. Uh, you know, robotics was a big thing back in the 1950s, the 1960s. Uh, perhaps we all remember the television shows, Lost in Space, that featured a robot, yeah. Jetsons, yeah. Star Trek. No, we never think that's going to happen. 2001 Space Odyssey. Exactly. So there, there were movies, there's television. Um, robotics became a major thing in uh, manufacturing, as we know, in the medical industry. Uh, and there's a lot of great uses for it, and we probably wouldn't be where we are today without it. Uh, especially in terms of automation. Uh, but, again, as Bob said, you know, there is a fear of having, whether it's AI or robotics, uh, sort of replace humans in the workplace and in other areas. I think uh, AI and robotics are necessary. I think we need it, but it should, it should serve humans and not replace humans. Well said. Yeah. Even though I have to say, the medical field with the robotics is wonderful. The surgeries they do with robotics is beyond. It's really good. I don't know how many of you watch, what's the show we watch? The Good Doctor, is it? Yes. yes. That has that D2 or whatever it is. No, I don't think no, it's that. No, what no, show is that? that? Is, um, Chicago Med. Chicago Med has that new medical technology that's yeah. on there. I don't know if you watch it, that they're trying to use this machine to do all the procedures instead of the doctors, and they made a mistake recently. So, But I have to say, the medical field with robotic surgery is wonderful. You didn't see the last show on Chicago. <laughs> yes, what happened? It screwed up. It screwed up it on the main up. guy who owned the hospital. No, huh? before that. Oh, I there was one before that, and that's why they, they got rid of it. Yeah. Because it tells you what to do, where to cut, what to take out, whatever. Unfortunately, it okay. malfunctioned, and I, they wound it up killing the guy. I didn't see the ending. We didn't see the ending. It's all right. It's not a promotion. They don't pay you for the promotion. It's already done for the season. So, anyway, I'm talking about artificial intelligence because I'm learning, and you're going to see in two weeks another Ricardo is going to meet. I, I'm just going to address that. I swear. I swear to my God. I'm learning about that. And you, only with my picture, I could make my avatar. You can only get to one Ricardo. Yeah. You're putting in two. You're going to see, you're gonna see another Ricardo. It's going to be, you're going to see his artificial intelligence. He's talking perfect English. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I swear to my God. You're going to see that. For the reason. I choose this topic because I think it's very important for everybody to learn about this thing is happening right now. Because we don't know exactly who is talking on the internet, or maybe you're watching news and it's somebody else. It's an artificial intelligence. So you have to understand that no is what you see. What about your car? Excuse me? What about your car? My car? What about my car? Smart car? Cars are going to self drive themselves. Smart car? Well, Uber. But I'm good. Oh, sorry. You're going to say something? Yeah. Oh, no. No, I'm sorry. It's basically a rolling computer. Your car is a rolling computer. So now the technology is such. An example yesterday, I did. I, Coming off my front camera 
was supposed to activate to say I got too close to the item in front of me, and instead I get a, a notice malfunction, go to a dealer. Oh my gosh. Um, 300 miles away. Where am I supposed to find a dealer that I don't know if I'm getting an electronic notice of a malfunction? AI is in your cars. They've been hacked. The cars can get hacked. It's a scary thing. Terminators can be that's scary, but everything is in control. If that, you want to say something. I was going to say a few months back. A few months back, a friend of mine invited me out for lunch. We hadn't seen each other in years, and uh, he wanted to show me his Tesla. Um, his Tesla, his Tesla car, and and again, this is nothing against that brand or anything like that. But but he was showing me all the incredible features inside. And the first thing I noticed is that it looks like it's in looks like all this extra space, screens everywhere. I thought I was in a mobile radio shack. <laughs> but those of you remember the reference to that, because there isn't even a radio shack these days. But anyway, so the interesting thing that uh, that kind of terrified me was, as cool as it looked, and I'm all for, for space age stuff, but when he saw, said, oh, I, I, I long trips, I don't even need to drive. I can just sit back. And so he put it into that mode, awesome. and we're driving around rural Plumstead, and I'm like, my heart is going. <laughs> yeah. And then, but, but everything was fine, and he's like, oh, we better turn around and go back. And he just swung out, and uh, like at warp nine, and I was like, my heart was in my throat. So I was like, I don't know if I could let go of that. I don't know if, 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 I, if my car had that ability, if I'd be constantly looking, like <laughs> yeah. wanting to grab the steering wheel again. So it, it's going to take some getting used to. It. Okay. Let's go back a couple of years. <laughs> now, when COVID, COVID, fire, when COVID hit, what happened Road trip. with the people? There was no touching. There was no communication. Yeah. A lot of damage was done mentally and physically when COVID hit. We're touchy people. <laughs> you know what I mean? Do you agree with me? Yes. Yeah, I mean, and, and then all this bullshit that they're coming up with and robots and all, you know. I want the robot to do a bit more with the discussion. Do something else. Okay. You understand? Yeah, I, I think transparency is an issue as regarding a sort of intimacy. Uh, and that is when you get some sort of a bot. Computer. We're not sure these days with AI whether that's an actual human being or a computer. And you know, just think about your interaction with people, whether you want to speak to a computer or a human. Uh, so, for example, if you're in a religious setting and you speak to to you know, your, your minister, your pastor, your rabbi, imam, whoever, are you sure you're speaking to that individual or are you speaking to some form of artificial intelligence? When you go to a physician, or now we have telemed, which has become very popular post-COVID, are you speaking to an actual physician or are you speaking to a ro robot or, or some form of AI that's been programmed to respond? And it's almost impossible for us as human beings watching a screen to determine it. AI has become so good and, and so detailed, uh, far exceeding what we see in, in computer game graphics, that uh, it's, it's virtually impossible to tell the difference.
doing a background check on the house and the people that purchased it in the past or just what's gone wrong with the house in the past. It could be anything. It could be murder. It could be something illegal. What are your thoughts, panel? Yeah, so uh, I actually went through this experience myself. Uh, I lived in Rockland County, which is where Nyack, New York, is located. Uh, in Nyack, there's a case uh, where the property was supposedly haunted. Uh, the, the sellers did not inform the buyers. The buyers found that out after they put down their deposit. Uh, the buyers then sued to get the deposit back and went uh, to the courts. And the courts, believe it or not, are held in favor of the purchase because the sellers did not disclose it. They actually ruled that there were in fact ghosts. This is the court making that decision. Uh, and New York is open up actually only four states in the United States, the others being South Dakota, California, and Alaska that require sellers to disclose whether or not there have been um, also different types of activity, not just kind of normal, normal activity, but whether there's been criminal activity, murders, uh, any of those types of things. Uh, and the research that I've done shows that about two-thirds of the uh, country do, would not purchase a house knowing that there had been uh, paranormal activity uh, going on. So it's just something to think about. And I can tell you that you know, when I purchased a house, having had that experience uh, relatively close to where, where I grew up, uh, that was one thing I was was considering. In, in the end, it didn't really matter because uh, it was a fairly new construction. But anyway, uh, it, it's something I certainly have thought about. In New York, on Long Island, there have been several murders in several houses, especially the Avenue House. But in New York, from what I understand, the real estate agent must disclose if there was a murder in the house. So. That's something I wouldn't buy a house where there was a murder, personally. Oh, you know. But they have to, the real estate agent legally has to disclose that to you in New York when you're buying a house. It has to be on the disclosure list. What about the energies in the house? You're talking about spiritual? spiritual yeah. That they don't have to. No? No, it's murder. They don't have to. What about suicide? It's not murder. And if somebody has a no, it's not. It's two totally different things. You, you're killing yourself, and somebody else is killing you. That means it was a burglar in the house. Well, but it's a spirit around. The spirit is going to be there. I mean, the energy is going to be there. Is that if you broken? believe in that? I think it's due. If you believe that the dead person's energy is going to be in the house, yeah. then and that's up to you to buy it. If you don't believe in the spirits that are going to be in the house, then buy it. I would get a good deal. All right, I have something real quick. Sorry, George. Um, there was an incident, um, and my husband can contest to this. We lived in Tom's River, and there was a family on the corner that um, the whole family uh, got in a car accident. They were going on vacation and got hit head on with a tractor trailer. The only one that survived was the grandmother. The father, the mother, and the two kids died. The house was left unattended because nobody had wanted to buy it. My girlfriend actually wanted to buy it. Now, as far as for spiritual, I do believe in that, and so does my husband. So his mother was um, very big into that. And in fact, she used to do work for the police um, for murders. So she did come the one time, and she, because my girlfriend wanted to buy the house, and don't ask me what she does because she would never disclose it. She came back. She said, do not buy the house. They will be back. So I do believe in that. I do believe in spirits. I do believe that if something tragic had happened in the house, um, there is an energy in there. So I, that's something I do believe in. I do believe in sage also because I moved here. I staged the whole house, opened all the windows and the doors. I do believe in that also. Okay, George. Anybody who's a realtor in New Jersey takes a code of ethics, and in that code of ethics, you must declare anything derogatory about the house. And if you don't declare it and somebody finds it after they move in, 
You can be in a world of trouble. You can lose your license. You can be fined ten thousand dollars a day until it's rectified. It's, it's a very, very serious thing. So in New Jersey, anything derogatory about a house, your agent must tell you about it, or else you can have a recourse. So they're they're pretty tight with that, and ninety nine percent of them follow it very strictly. I do believe they care. They feel lost. Because she was living before me, and I hear her almost every night around me. Well, first of all, I'm here for I was in Sage to every house I've ever been to. And I have my daughter insists on it. She buys the whole Sage package for me, everything. She won't let me move in until the house is Sage. Um, we also just recently bought a house in North Carolina. and. Did a lot of research looking for a home, and the top of her list was she searched every area for pedophiles. If there were pedophiles within any vicinity of her home, that house was out of the question. But I've also owned several homes myself over my lifetime, and you guys probably understand this. I can't tell you how many houses I went into, and they creeped me out. Right. Oh, yeah. It could be a beautiful house, but there was something, I, I picked up a coldness in them that I knew I could never ever live in that house. It's, it's, and then you walk into a house and it's just like, wow, this is my house, this is where I belong. And it's just a gut feeling almost. Yes, please. I bought a home in Clark. <laughs> and uh, every time I would leave the house and come home, I would smell smoke when I entered near the kitchen. And it, it, never, it never left me. I was invited to a wedding. The owners of the house were at the same table that I was sitting at. And I looked at her and I said, What happened in the kitchen? And she was like this. What do you mean? I said, well, well, something happened. She said, There was a fire in the walls. Right? I said, okay, and the moment I found out that, I never smelt it again. Never. And you talk about when a new home, new brew, uh, what do you call it, a can of salt, put the salt in the house at the front door, the back door, and sweep it out. <laughs> sweep the evil, whatever's in that home, sweep, sweep it out. Yeah, any negativity. And I'm not Catholic. I'm Presbyterian. I've had, I've had, you are crazy. I've had a priest come and bless all my homes. We know everybody loves you, Chris. <laughs> so we're almost done, Barbara. Okay. Barbara, we're going to go to play. You want to play the games? Yes. Okay. All right, everybody ready for a game? Sure. Yes. yes. Want to win something? Sure. Can we hold on? Good, because we will. We have three okay. prizes. Okay. Are we ready? Are we ready? Okay. Okay, first one. Nobody can see it but me. Anyway, we're going to go to people. Have three. you picked a number from 1 to 40? We'll start here. Forty. Forty-one. Thirty-four. Lower. Um, Twenty-three. Lower. Twenty. I go over here, Barbara. Where are we? Twenty. Twenty. Okay, you were over there. Go ahead. Seventeen. Higher or lower? Lower. Lower. Nine. Higher. Higher. Eleven it is. Yeah. Rico got it. Okay, now we got another one. Yeah, another one. Okay, now we'll go back over here. Where did we stand off? Okay. Oh, 
Okay. Here we go. Go. Back to four. in Manchester, these cats, and I see that with, with the fox, I hear them playing around at 3 o'clock, and I see the mommy and the, the three kids. Are you the one on Facebook that has the fox running around? <laughs> I have, and they all love each other. And I said to my sisters, we should all get along. And the mom protects them, but they're all like a group, you know, takes a village. I don't know what it is where I live. They we all, should learn a lot from animals. Oh, I do. And, you know, the same thing yes. with uh, deer. They stay away. The, the, you name it. But they, the cats keep away the mice. And I don't have mice problem anymore. I don't have problems with deer anymore. I don't have problems with rabbits. Because the, the cats are protected. But they welcome other animals like fox. So do you think the animals have soul? Yes, they do. And I'm not a cat person. I'm a dwarf person. But if there's something about the energy where I live. It's like it attracts everything, all the animals. And where are you at? What you let up? Like, I don't want to pass over there. Right. <laughs> Cambridge Circle. No, no, but they love each other. Yeah. They're so clean. I'm going to be over there where the animals even, are. Even my neighbors who didn't care for the cats, they love the cats. Oh, thanks to your cats, you know, we don't fun with the mice. So Danny Thomas, he doesn't have to worry about going in my head. <laughs> well, I think the show turned out wonderful. Yeah. No, well, I think the topic thank is you so great. Much. Yeah, and I want to say thank you, Mr. Ivan Gilbert and Mr. Boss. 
Thank you so much for rolling with me, everybody. So let's say bye, everybody. Okay, this was wonderful, everybody. Have a good day. Be safe. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. It's a lot of fun.